Good morning, Buchanan Church of God and our extended online family. Uh, today, uh, I want to spend some time with you in God's Word. Uh, throughout the month of January, uh, I'm going to uh, be really bringing some lessons from the book of Jonah. And uh, I know many of you have uh, been following along with our, our Bible studies throughout this, uh, this time. And you know, during our quarantine time and all those kind of things, I started doing some of these lessons and and uh, I'm trying to, uh, you know, throughout the year, try to keep up with some of those kind of things for you. I know many of you uh, have enjoyed, uh, you know, spending some time in God's Word. It uh, gives you an opportunity to study. Some of you aren't able to come to our Wednesday evening Bible studies and some of those kind of things and participate. So it gives you an opportunity really to share uh, together. Uh, as we uh, spend some time in God's Word. So we're gonna, through the month of January here, we're going to be uh, looking at, at four lessons, one each week I'll, I'll, I'll be posting uh, on the book of Jonah. And so I encourage you to come and, and be a part of that and, and spend some time together, uh, certainly in God's Word. So as we do, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray for uh, each one, Lord, as we gather together, uh, as we uh, spend some time in your Word, uh, just enlighten us, encourage us, just bring uh, your word uh, to just some understanding for us, Lord, that we can grab onto something, that we can uh, just use it in a way, Lord, that uh, uh, brings some benefit to us and, and some encouragement to, to each one of our lives. Be with us, Lord, in this time of study, and we ask these things in your precious and your holy name. Amen. Okay, let's get started. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, the first chapter of Jonah. Uh, here to, together, so uh, I encourage you as you as you. Uh, we're going to look at a little bit of introduction uh, to the book of Jonah, but you can get ready, get uh, get your Bible open, and and turn to to Jonah. And we'll be looking at chapter chapter one uh, certainly to, today. So you know, as we start to really kind of introduce, uh, you know, the book of uh, of Jonah. You know, Jonah starts out in verse one. It says, "Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, uh, the son of Amittai." Jonah which means dove in, in Hebrew. And, you know, Jonah here is, is identified uh, as that, that son of Amittai, uh, which means truthful. And we see that, uh, you know, with Jonah and, and uh, some of the things of his life, um, we kind of get the impression here that you know Jonah began to speak on, on behalf of God about the time of the prophet Elisha was concluding his his work so it kind of gives you some time frames you know you know scripturally to kind of when Jonah falls into place here and one of the things we want to to really take a look at and and really understand is that you know Jonah is not the main character of of the book of Jonah and I know that sounds strange in some ways because when we think about Jonah and you know the books named after him uh, we, we think he's the main character but really the main character here is God and I think we need to keep that in in focus and, and understanding as you read through the book of uh, of Jonah here uh, throughout the month of January just be reminded that uh, God is the main character. You know, it's not Jonah. Jonah plays, you know, the 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 sub character role here. God is the main character of the uh, of the of the book, and uh, I think there's a couple key issues uh, as we look through Jonah. A couple key things that that we can kind of take from him, and and I think it really helps us to understand the book a little bit better. One one is that. You know, Jonah here records the the the, the mission uh, of Jonah to go to to Nineveh, but it's it's really written you know to the nation of Israel. Uh, you know, and the nation of Israel hated Nineveh, and God wants to use Jonah really to confront uh, that hatred, uh, to confront what you know Israel is you know certainly thinking about Nineveh. And, and the prophecy of, of Jonah is as much about racism uh, as it is about uh, the, the mission that, uh, that God had in store for, for, for Jonah. And the second key, really, is that, as we said before, Jonah isn't the principal character here. Uh, you know, God is. God, uh, you know, shows you know, the first word and the last word here when it comes to, to, uh, to, to, to Jonah. And he really, uh, God orchestrates his love. Uh, and 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 uh, you know the the drama that's taking place here with with Jonah and as you know the the events unfold 
uh, you know, don't get caught up in kind of the the props and the staging and all the kind of things that go along with the story. Uh, you know, the bottom line, the bottom line message is that the Lord Jehovah is the central character of this uh, of this story, and I think as that unfolds, you'll you'll see that. And I think it's easy to kind of get caught up in in the character of Jonah. But I go back, and I think as you read, you'll you'll see that that God is really the main the main character, and that helps us to understand that the focus of this book, uh, the focus of, of of this study, and really the real message of, of Jonah, is that there is uh, the, the failure of success <laughs> it is really, if you want to kind of term uh, what uh, what this book really is uh, is is about. If you, uh, I, I'm a Beatles fan. I, maybe some of you are too. And in the in the in 1960s, uh, the Beatles recorded uh, an old country song, uh, "Act Naturally." And, and maybe some of you uh, know that song, or you can go back in YouTube and and uh, and find it someplace uh, that way. But that title reminds us that there are some things that we we don't have to learn how to do. They just kind of come naturally to us. Maybe there's things in your life that that you know come naturally to you. You don't have to learn them. You know, they just kind of naturally come. Uh, you, uh, one of the blink in our eyes, you know, it comes natural. We don't have to learn how to blink our eyes, do we? You know, it's those kind of things certainly in, in our lives, and that's true. Uh, you know, in our inclination sometimes to run away from God. You know, we don't have to to really uh, learn how to be disobedient, do we? Uh, you know, we may have to learn how to obey. <laughs> But we don't have to learn how to be uh, disobedient. I think that, in some sense, comes rather naturally sometimes, you know, to us. And so, as we're introduced here to to Jonah, we see him act naturally uh, in that sense of of being disobedient. And Jonah has really some short sightedness when it comes to to God and and himself, and and really even the the uh, the, the city of Nineveh. Uh, you know, God asked, uh, you know, when God uh, uh, asked Jonah really to carry this message of, of warning uh, to another relation, or to another nation, I'm sorry, uh, you know, uh, uh, he had, didn't have a relationship with Nineveh. He, he hated Nineveh, just like the, the whole nation of, uh, of Israel did. You know, Jonah runs in the opposite direction. And so, I, you know, I think we get a picture here of Jonah's heart, but we also get a picture of God's heart. Uh, you know, in this in this situation, certainly in this uh, in, in this story. So, if you have your Bibles, turn with me, Jonah chapter one. Let's look at at verse one first, and it says, "The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city." And uh, you know, Nineveh. Uh, you know, not to kind of you know bore you with some of the the, the details. Details, but Nineveh sat on the the east bank of the Tigris River. River, it's about 550 miles from Samaria. So if you get in the back of your Bible and you kind of take a look at at the the map there in, in the back, it was the 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 capital, the northern kin, kingdom of Israel. And you know Jonah, you know it it would have taken him you know quite a while, you know first of all to get to Nineveh at at walking on an average of. 15 or 20 miles a, a, a day, uh, you know, 550 miles. It, it would have taken, it would have taken a, a, a quite a while to to get to Nineveh. Um, you know, Nineveh. It was large. It was a large city. It was protected by uh, an outer wall and an inner inner wall. That way, uh, the inner wall was uh, 50 feet wide, 100 feet high, um, and you know, and that's why Nineveh. Uh, you know, kind of shared in its greatest glory. It was protected. It uh, it had that wall of protection certainly around it. And we see in verse two, uh, you know, of our uh, uh, of Jonah one, it says, "Cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me." It's as God says. And we we see that you know it's a message of judgment here to to the city of of Nineveh. You know, God's not extending mercy. Is he's he's extending judgment. 
and God was going to judge the people of Nineveh. Uh, and he was going to judge because of their, their wickedness. There was great wickedness in, in the city of Nineveh. And he says, he's, you know, it says in Genesis 18 that God is the judge of, uh, of all the earth. So we understand, you know, God, God judges that wickedness. So we don't, there's no, no surprise in that. No surprise that God uh, was judging that wickedness, as he does now. You know, judges the, the wickedness uh, of our lives also. And so, you know, even though we know that God is, is Savior, He's also sovereign. And I think that's a, that's a good point to, to remember and to, to recognize about, uh, about God. You know, God, as judge, <laughs> uh, you know, sent, uh, wanted to send His messenger Jonah here to the city of Nineveh and wanted Jonah to speak on, on certainly on behalf of God. And Jonah didn't want to do that. And, and what's he do? He, he bolts off the other way. And we look in, in, in verse 3, it says, But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of, of the Lord. So, uh, you know, Jonah's response here to, to God is, uh, you know, the opposite of what Isaiah's was, uh, who said, Lord, here I am, send me. That was the opposite of what, what Jonah did. You know, Jonah, you know, he gets up and he, he bolts. You know, he takes, he, uh, he, certainly, he certainly takes off. And, and what's interesting is he goes in totally the opposite direction of, of what Nineveh is. He heads for Tarshish. Uh, and, you know, Tarshish was about 2,500 miles west of, of, of Joppa. And it was along the, the west coast of, of Spain, actually. And so, um, you know, he fleed, went the total opposite direction, uh, thinking that he was going to flee from the presence of the Lord. Now, you know, let's be reasonable. I, I mean, I, I probably in, in Jonah's mind, I mean, if he really thought about it, he, he realizes he can't get away from, from God. But he was trying to get as far away from Nineveh, and that was, you know, the most important thing at the, at the moment. But fooling himself maybe into thinking that he could flee from God's presence. I, maybe we do that some. I, do we hide from God? I think we do. I think you and I hide from God sometimes, or we think that we can hide from God. But the reality is, is, is that presence of God is, is there. It's around us. It's always, uh, you know, with us. And so you and I can't hide from, from God's presence uh, at, at any point. Uh, in our lives. It's always there. It's always uh, available to us. When we want it, it's great. But when we're hiding from God, uh, that presence uh, of God, uh, you know, isn't always uh, the thing that we want, uh, certainly around and in our, in our, our lives. So, uh, you know, as we see, you know, as Jonah flees here, um, you know, it's a reminder too. Psalm one thirty nine. Yeah, we're not going to read that, but you can, you know, if you're taking some notes, you're writing some things down. If you go back and read Psalm one thirty nine, uh, you know, it's it says in Psalm one thirty nine that it is impossible for us to escape the presence of the Lord. So, uh, you know, while Jonah attempted, while Adam attempted, while Cain attempted, you know, to uh, to escape that presence uh, of God, running away from from Him, um, rather than obeying uh, God's command, uh, Jonah tries to run. And maybe you and I have done that same thing at times. We've run from the presence of God, trying not to, uh, you know, have to do what God wants us to, to do. So when we think about, you know, why did why did Jonah flee? Uh, you know, while he, I think, had an understanding of God's certainly of God's judgment. He also had an understanding of God's mercy. Uh, you know, Jonah, you know, didn't want Nineveh, who was an enemy nation to the nation of Israel, to, 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 to be forgiven. You know, he didn't want them to, to be forgiven. And Jonah knew that God was willing to forgive. God was also a, not only a God of judgment, but God was also a, the God he knew was also a God of forgiveness, too. Uh, and, and, you know, God recognizes our change of heart, doesn't he? Uh, and, and, you know, Jonah didn't want to be anything a part of that. He didn't want them to escape God's wrath. He wanted judgment uh, upon the city uh, of Nineveh. And I, and I think over, you know, over the years, sometimes, you know, people have excused, made excuses for Jonah. You know, they've, they've said, uh, you know, well, uh, you know, Jonah's uh, response is certainly, uh, you know, certainly natural. It's understandable. Uh, you know, certainly that, that way there was a, uh, it was a difficult assignment. It would have taken him a long time to get there. 
Uh, you know, all those kind of things that go along with, uh, with excuses that, you know, we all make certainly in our lives. But others may even have said that, hey, the, the, it, it was too dangerous. It was dangerous for Jonah to, to make his way into to, uh, to Nineveh and share that, that, that message. Uh, you know, the, the evil of Nineveh uh, was pretty legendary, uh, you know, in ancient times. And it had been experienced by the Jewish people. There have been a lot of, uh, uh, you know, evil and, and uh, discord and uh, just, you know, terrible things, you know, from the city of, uh, of Nineveh. But at the root, really, of Jonah's unwillingness to go to Nineveh uh, was his hatred. I mean, that was the root uh, his, his he he hated those people and he hated the city uh, of uh, of of Nineveh, and so for Jonah to to go to Nineveh, uh, this would have been kind of the equivalent, uh, you know, asking a a, a a Jewish resident of New York City to uh, in the 1940s to to go to to uh, to Berlin and ask the Nazis to to uh, to forgive to be to ask there for you know, to be forgiven or ask them for forgiveness, you know, and, and uh, forgive them for what they, you know, what had done to the Jewish people. You know, so that would have been the equivalent, you know, of that. So it kind of kind of puts you in, in mind of what, uh, what that would be uh, would like. A lot of racial, racial tension. And uh, because of that, Jonah fled. He didn't want to deal uh, certainly with that. Is it easier to hate than love? Hmm. Well, that's a good question, isn't it? You know, maybe it is sometimes. Maybe it is easier to hate uh, than it is to, 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 to love. And when we look at our lives, you know, I think we have to be careful as God's people uh, to, to say, uh, do we find ourselves creating that same kind of thing in our life? Do we create a Nineveh in our lives? Are there people? Are there places, are there situations where we've created, you know, kind of a hate and we, we avoid that? We don't want to talk with those people. We don't want to deal with that situation or that circumstance or that, that, that place. Is it easier to hate than it is to love? And that's a tough question. I mean, that's a question that, that you know, you have to wrestle with. I have to, to wrestle with certainly in my, in, in my life. And I, and I think, you know, it's important to wrestle with those questions. Sometimes we kind of put those off. You know, I, and even as Christians, you know, do we deal with racism? Do we deal with hatred? We do. I think we do, and and I, and it's being honest about that, and and asking the Lord, you know, where are those places where I have hatred, you know, towards a, a person or an individual or group of people or whatever it is, you know, and those are things that that you and I have to deal with. We have to to lay before the Lord. We have to ask for forgiveness, confess those things. Certainly, be before uh, before. Uh, 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 before God that way. And I think, you know, when we look at that, you know, that prejudice, you know, will it cause us like Jonah to sometimes even just be guilty of silence, uh, you know, instead of expressing the, the heart of God uh, in that situation. You know, Jonah chose silence uh, and he chose hate over obedience and, and, and instead of choosing love is what God wanted him to do. So how did how did Jonah flee? We look in verse 3, it says, Jonah went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish, and so he paid the fare, and he went into it. So, you know, that, that boat that sailed from Joppa to Tarshish, you know, only sailed a few times a year. Uh, and so um, there was, there just happened to be room for him on that on that ship. He paid the the fare, got on the uh, the, the the ship, and he and he headed west in the opposite direction of uh, of Nineveh. And, and at this point, you know, I have a feeling Jonah felt maybe affirmed in his uh, his actions. Uh, you know, things were working out. Uh, you know, kind of. Uh, he, he fooled himself into to, to thinking that boy he had made the, the the right decision. All the pieces were certainly falling into place for him, and uh, you know the circumstances that that kind of you know went you know kind of enforced his plan. You know he thought boy he was really doing the the, the right thing, but 
the sad reality is is he was more concerned about himself than he was certainly about uh, about others. And sometimes it's easy. We, we, we can justify our own actions. When we think about things, when we think about why we do things or why we disobey God, certainly we can justify that. And sometimes the circumstances of our life, you know, for a moment work out. And boy, that really lulls us into thinking that, gosh, I've really made the right the right decision here. So, uh, you know, but like circumstances, like the wind, they all change. <laughs> things can change pretty, uh, pretty quickly. And we see things here in the story change pretty quickly. Look at verse 4. It says, But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Um, uh, the Lord, you know, who, you know, had called Jonah... Uh, now was pursuing Jonah, <laughs> uh, and he did it in the way that God always does, uh, using every available resource, you know, because it is all God's. Uh, you know, it, the wind described as striking the sea with such a great force that it rocked the ship. <laughs> so here's, you know, God, you know, you, you know, pursuing Jonah, using the wind, using all the resources uh, that he has to, to, to be able to... Uh, um, you know, remind Jonah, you know, that, that God is in control, that God, you know, his presence hasn't left Jonah. He still knows what he's doing. He still is, you know, disappointed in Jonah, you know, for fleeing. He still wants Jonah to, to go to Nineveh. That hasn't, uh, that hasn't changed. And so, you know, the result here of God's action is that there was a mighty tempest on, on the sea. And that brings uh, really to mind, if you remember in Mark chapter 4, Jesus uh, is on the the Sea of Galilee, you know, and and you remember the story that he, he calmed the sea, and and you know, and 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 here in the story of Jonah, he causes the sea, uh, you know, to, uh, to 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 be you know waves and and, and to be stormy and to, and things, like that. you know. So you know, God has control, you know, both both ways. He can calm that storm, but he also can cause that storm. And I, and I think, you know, it's interesting, you know, when we think about, you know, us as servants, and, and really we think about in, in the case here of Jonah, um, you know, God, you know, wants us to obey him. Uh, he wants us to be uh, obedient of him. And there's things that, you know, God can certainly put around us. Uh, to remind us uh, of how important it is to obey that God has, you know, He's in control, <laughs> you know, and 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 He's the one that can, you know, really get us back to to that place and be reminding us uh, of the fact that that He's He's in He's in control. And we see in verse five, first part, of part verse five, it says, "Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and threw the cargo that was the ship into the sea to lighten the load." So Jonah, Jonah's dis disobedience here didn't just affect Jonah. And isn't that true in, in disobedience? I, you know, our own disobedience, of, we think it only affects us. But the reality of, uh, of it is, is, is there are other people that, that kind of play a part or, or, or you know, uh, really also are at a disadvantage sometimes because of our own dis disobedience. It caused problems, uh, you know, Jonah, not just for himself, but it caused problems for these sailors, for everybody that was certainly on, on the ship, those who were around us. Our own disobedience causes problems for the people uh, certainly around us. And, and in a sense, you know, these sailors, they were, they were really innocent bystanders. Uh, they were caught up in this battle between Jonah and Jonah. And, and, and God. And so you see what their response was. Uh, you know, there was an emotional response. It says, they, first of all, they were afraid. You know, I can, you know, gosh, you know, even as sailors, I mean, I, you know, they would have had experience, they would, but they were afraid. This must have been a heck of a storm. Uh, you know, God, this wasn't just a regular old storm that, that maybe they dealt with, you know, hundreds of times. This was a storm, you know, of, of great multitude. You know, so they knew something was wrong. Something was was different here, and uh, because of that, you know, there was certainly fear in these uh, in these sailors' lives. And the, and the second part was a spiritual response. It says every man cried out to his God, and uh, you know, it's interesting here. Um, you know, the, these these men, you know, I'm sure, really, what their what their spiritual background or you know 
who they worship, but you know, every man was crying out to, to, the, to the God that they uh, thought maybe could, could, could help. And then the practical part was they, you know, they were throwing the cargo over the ship, you know, to lighten the, the, the load here, uh, you know, trying to survive. There's a desire to, to survive. Hey, we'll get rid of things, you know, whatever it is, food, clothing, whatever, you know, whatever we need to get rid of here to, to lighten the load of the, uh, of the ship. And then we see Jonah's response. Look at the, the second part of verse 5. It says, But Jonah had gone down to the lowest part of the ship, had laid down, and was fast asleep. What? In the midst of this, Jonah goes down and is sleeping. In the midst of this storm, the midst of everything was taking a place, Jonah goes down and goes to sleep. Now, how is that even possible? You know, sometimes people people think, you know, when we have a sense of peace on our lives, you know, we're able to rest and we're able Well, you know, that's really the opposite here. I I you know, it's it's a kind of an amazing thing that Jonah is really able to go down and go to sleep. Um, you know, you know, the result of that or the, you know, what Jonah's doing isn't really a submission to to God and trusting God here. You know, he was somehow able to go down and and, and go to sleep. So I don't know if it's just the exhaustion uh, of disobedience or, you know, what was going on. But it's an amazing thing to think that, that Jonah was able to lay down and go to sleep. And so we see here in verse 6, it says that the captain came to him, said to him, what do you, what do you mean, sleeper, arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. So here we see the you know the shipmaster he he wakes Jonah up and says hey you know we've all cried out to our god nothing's happening you know so you cry out to your he pleaded with him to pray to his god uh you know to to call and and, and so that they would 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 be saved here I, you know and, and I think it's interesting here you know here's a here's a pagan you know man uh you know shipmaster here you know asking Jonah to call out to his God to to, uh, to 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 pray, and so you know they had tried everything else. They'd done everything else. They were left with only one possibility: uh, is that they they needed Jonah to to intervene here. And verse seven says, "And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know whose cause this trouble has come upon us.'" And so they cast lots, and and guess what? The lot fell upon Jonah. <laughs> now that you know, that was a common thing in, in ancient times. You know, they cast lots for different things. Often it was kind of a colored. These were colored stones that they that they they use, and you know they wanted to see what the the will uh, you know of the gods would would uh, would be as they as they did that, and we see that the uh, the lot fell upon Jonah, and we see in verse eight it says, "Then they said to Jonah, Please tell us." For whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And what people are you? <laughs> so, with with uh, you know, kind of uh, you know, almost machine gun speed, there they they begin asking Jonah all these questions. Uh, you know, who are you? Why is this happening? All those kind of things. And and, and Jonah replies there in verse nine. He says, "I'm a Hebrew. I fear." The Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land, and um, that wasn't necessarily true, was it? I mean, I, you know, Jonah kind of, you know, kind of tells a a, a, a half truth here in a, in a sense. I think if Jonah really feared God, uh, he would have been traveling to Nineveh, and not to Tarshish. But but when Jonah identified, uh, you know, God was the one who made the sea, he was indicating that uh, that you know God personally responsible um, uh, for the predicament they were in and, and that Jonah was, you know, uh, you know, the solution here. And so we look at verse 10, it says, Then the men were exceedingly afraid, said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he had fled the presence of the Lord because he had told them. And they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may calm, be calm for us? And the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. And then verse 10 says that after the sailors learned about Jonah running from God, it says that they were exceedingly afraid. Now, first of all, they feared the storm. Now they're fearing the God behind the storm. Hmm, isn't that interesting uh, to, uh, to see that? 
Uh, they were recognizing, these sailors were recognizing that, that fear uh, of God. They're recognizing you know, the true God and, and His authority certainly in that. And, um, you know, I think sometimes, you know, situations, circumstances, put people who don't know God, who don't recognize God, sometimes there are things that, that happen. They become kind of players in the story. And, you know, here, here's a situation where they begin to recognize the true God. And so, you know, there, there are, even out of difficult circumstances, there are things, good things, certainly that sometimes can, can happen, that can be revealed. Uh, you know, two people that don't know the Lord, that they come to know the Lord because of, uh, because of that. And then verse 12 says, Jonah said to them, Pick me up, throw me into the sea, and the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. <laughs> so Jonah is really, uh, you know, I, it's not so much that he has a, kind of a death wish maybe here so much, but... Um, you know, he, I it just the fact that he'd rather die than than obey God and and preach to these people that he hates. Um, you know, you know it would be over for him, and I and maybe he does have a death wish in some sense. I guess maybe I mean, want to rethink that a little bit. Maybe maybe he does. You know, he he rather die than than really go to these people in Nineveh. So in some sense, maybe I guess he does have kind of a death wish uh, in that uh, in that sense. Um, you know, Jonah could have said, "Well, hey, I'll repent." Uh, you guys can re- re- repent. We'll turn around and 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 you know we can go back to, uh, to 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 Nineveh, but he didn't say that. He said I I would rather die than go to 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 Nineveh. And so we look then in 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 verse thirteen and fourteen. It says the men rode hard to return to the land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord. Please let us perish for this man's life. Do not let us perish for this man's life. Do not charge us with innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So, you know, these men were working hard to save this one man's life. You know, these these guys, they didn't know the Lord. They didn't know the true God. And here they are. Um... You know, and, and and you see really the disrespect that that Jonah is 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 showing them here in verse thirteen and, and fourteen, and then we see kind of the the dramatic ending here to the storm. And so fifteen and sixteen says, so they picked up Jonah, threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. And the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. So you know, the sea suddenly fell calm. Uh, and see what the result was? Those sailors' hearts grew stronger. Now they really feared God. You know, and it, in that, it's in that fear and worship and understanding of who, who God is. Uh, he not only caused the storm, but was able to turn it off as it suited his purposes. Uh, and so what do they do? They offered sacrifices. They worshiped the true God, made vows to commit to him. And meanwhile, what what did, what happened to Jonah? Jonah sinks like a rock, <laughs> thinking that he had had achieved his goal, thinking that he got his wish uh, to just die, he wouldn't have to go to uh, to, to Nineveh. Um, he thinks he has now escaped the presence of the Lord, but has he? Uh, we'll, 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 uh, that'll be our next uh, next lesson to uh, to look at that. Uh, you know, as we close here, uh, you know, I think it's sometimes I want you to think a little bit about. You know, your own Nineveh for a moment. Um, you know, sometimes we have people in our lives that, that you know, we've created, uh, I hate to say a hatred, but maybe that's true. Maybe sometimes in your life there's there's been a hatred for, uh, you know, groups of people or a, a person in, in your life, and that's become your own personal Nineveh. Uh, maybe those per- people don't meet your standards, what you think that, you know, your, that, that standard uh, of living is for you. And, and, and so, you know, sometimes we are guilty then of really showing love. And, you know, and there's, there's, there's people certainly that live in disobedience to, to God that you and I deal with. Um, and while we, you know, we don't necessarily appreciate, um, you know, their lifestyle or how they live, you know, God does ask us to love and to reach out and love. And sometimes it's in that love. That you know, change can happen. That things can 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 turn around. And and uh, you know, I often you know say you know when when we have you know dif- a, a difficult person, a person that you know um, 
you know, maybe there even is hatred towards that person. Um, you know, praying for that person, boy, you know, it, as hard as that is, what that does is that so often takes that hatred out of our lives. And so if you created a, 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 your own personal Nineveh, you know, would you allow the Lord to work and, and to move and to show you some of those kind of things? Show those places in your life where maybe you've had some, some hatred toward a person or a group of people. And uh, would you allow the Lord to make some changes, to show you that, to allow you to, to, to see some places where maybe you could reach out of love, that, that your heart could change, certainly towards them. So that's, that's the, what, what I want you to think about, what I want you to reflect upon. And uh, really, uh, you know, spend some time, uh, you know, praying about that and uh, just allowing the Lord to, to certainly, uh, you know, use uh, some of those things in our lives, some of those places of maybe our own disobedience uh, to, to, to turn. Just like Jonah, uh, we'll see as we go through the story how, how things get, kind of get changed and get turned in his life. And uh, maybe the Lord can show us how we can love, love those difficult people, uh, certainly in our, in our lives. So... Uh, let's pray as we, uh, as we close again. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word, for uh, the challenge certainly that it is, and our own personal Ninevehs, Lord, those, those places in our life, Lord, where maybe we have some discord, we have some even, I venture to say, some hatred, Lord, maybe for uh, a person or a group of people, Lord. Would you deal with that in our lives, Lord? Show us that. Reveal that to us. Remind us, Lord, that, uh, that, that as, as God's people, that that's not how we are called to live, Lord. We are called to reach out. It doesn't mean that we agree necessarily with, uh, with that person or with that group of people uh, in, in how they live or the things that they are doing or saying. But, Lord, help us to, uh, to reach out in, in love. Uh, helping us to understand what that, that means, Lord, in our lives. Forgive us, Lord, when we've been disobedient, when we've kind of, you know, maybe turned our back, you know, on those people, Lord. Uh, we've turned our back on a, on a person, Lord, that you want us to reach out and witness to and, and love, Lord, uh, because you have called us to do that. Be with us. Challenge us. Uh, thank you again for your word and the time we spent together, Lord. And we ask these things in your name. Oh, man. Hey, thanks so much for being with us. Um, each week I'm going to uh, you know post a, a uh, another video. I, I can't give you always specific days, um, uh, but you know I'll try to do it. You know, kind of you know Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Probably that's probably going to, to be there. So if you are you know uh, you know uh, part of our uh, church Facebook page or whether you are uh, subscribed to our YouTube uh, channel, you know that'll give you an update. That'll give you uh, an alert. Uh, when these new videos come out. So uh, we so glad that you join us, so glad that you uh, are, are a part of uh, this time together. And I hope you get something out of it. I hope I give you something each week to grab onto, to think about, to pray about, and to be challenged by. Uh, take care. God bless, and uh, we'll see you next week.